Here at the Indiana State Museum, we're constantly working on new exhibits to add to our galleries. And that's made us realize some kinds of work can be really difficult. And that got us thinking. No matter how strong you are, no matter how big or small, some kinds of work can be hard. Fortunately, we humans have had some tools at our disposal since our earliest days to help us make work easier, whether that be for gardening, for woodworking, for sewing, or for hunting. There are six categories of tools that help make work easier. These tools are called simple machines. Simple machines come in all shapes and sizes and don't require any electrical power. We use machines to reduce the amount of effort it takes to get work done. But how do they make work easier? Well, first you have to understand what work is. Distance of the force can be in any direction. Are you pushing something up above your head? Or are you lowering it down to below you? Or are you moving the load from side to side horizontally? The amount of force that you apply depends on how heavy the load is and how far you're moving in any direction. Now that we know the equation, we can start taking a look at different simple machines, starting with a lever. A lever is a bar that rests on a pivot or a fixed point called a fulcrum. And when pressure is applied to one side, the load on the other side is lifted up. You even have a few built-in levers. Three, two, one. Your arm is the bar and your elbow is the fulcrum. And when you apply pressure, it works. By extending your arm with a tool, you can apply greater force to the object coming into contact with that tool. Another example of a simple machine is an inclined plane. An inclined plane is a surface with one end higher than the other end. The key to an inclined plane is overcoming a vertical challenge, where you have to move a load or an amount of weight from one level to another level. An incline increases the amount of distance over which work is done. So whether you have to get your car to another level of a parking garage or yourself to another level of a building, an inclined plane helps. Up. Up. Put your legs up. I can't. Get, lift me higher. Nope. We need to get an incline plane. Whether you're moving a person up to another level or a truck full of gorillas, using an inclined plane requires way less force than lifting the thing up itself. But an inclined plane doesn't have to be a smooth surface. Even a set of stairs works in the same way. Each small step divides the force over a longer distance than lifting something straight up. If you look at this staircase, you can think of it as an inclined plane wrapped around itself. It helps things move from one level to another level, just like an inclined plane does, except in a different pattern. For people who build things, screws are the exact same thing, just smaller. Looking at the screw, you can see an inclined plane curled around the center. As this is pressed into the wood, the grooves grab into the wood and hold the pieces together, which is a lot easier of a force than squeezing together from the outside. Can you think of another example of this kind of simple machine? A light bulb uses a screw at its base to connect itself to the lamp and the electricity running through it. Pulleys are simple machines that change the direction a force is applied to help move a load. They consist of a grooved wheel and then a rope or a cable. Adding multiple pulleys to change the direction of the force in multiple ways can make moving a big load even easier. This could be especially helpful at a rock quarry or a construction site where a crane might be used. Take a look at a flagpole. A rope travels from the ground level to the top of a pole and over a grooved wheel, then back down to the bottom. To get the flag to the top, you pull down on one side of the rope, lifting the other where the flag is attached. These are the pulleys for our freight elevator. 
It's an extra large elevator that can lift up to 15,000 pounds. The next simple machine is a wedge. A wedge is usually wider on one end and tapers to a point on the other end, sometimes a sharp edge or a toothed edge. It's usually used to separate things, and you can easily see this in a saw or an axe. You just want to cut the item that you're cutting in half, or at whatever point you want to cut it, uh, and you can get a nice clean Of course, Ryan, cut. there are different wedges available for different types of jobs. Like for a piece of paper, you might just want to use a pair of scissors. Just a thought. Try it. <laughs> you know, all this talk about simple machines has really made me hungry. Which reminds me. Did you know that you use a simple machine when you eat? Sure. Well, sure, a knife and fork work well, but your teeth do the same thing. They grind up your food into smaller pieces, separating it so that it's easier to swallow. Hmm. Well, what about a bigger example? Well, how does a plane fly or how does a boat sail? Both vehicles are pointed in the front end and wider on the opposite end. This allows for large objects to cut through the air or water dividing it, which creates less friction. This requires less force to propel an object forward. Yeah, you're right. Uh, cars can show us uh, another kind of simple machine, but we have to get back to work first. Eric. Eric. We, you know, we have to get back to work right now. Like, you can't put it back in the water. We have to, we have to go work. This, you're not getting paid for this. Cars use a wheel and axle. A wheel and axle is a simple machine centered around a fixed point. The wheel, with a large rod fixed at its center, works to move a load with less force. Anything with a wheel uses a wheel and axle. Another example is a pizza cutter. Have you ever tried to cut a pizza with a knife? In this example, a wedge works, but a wheel and axle can accomplish the same job but with much less force. Now that we've seen examples of all six different kinds of simple machines, it's probably much easier to recognize them all around you. You might find that sometimes one object might be able to be used as two different simple machines. Or maybe one machine is made up of a bunch of smaller simple machines. Think of the kind of work you do. How much harder would it be without the use of simple machines? There are plenty of simple machines we didn't have time to look at today. But keep your eyes open and look around. You use simple machines every day. The better you understand how simple machines work, the easier your work will be.